I've got a question that's come in on the website that I thought I'd do a quick video to answer. And I think this might be useful to quite a few people. It is, what do you do when you get overwhelmed and it all becomes a blur and nothing works? So, <laughs> um, right, I'm feeling the pain there. <laughs> um, I think this is a very common situation. There is so much information out there on playing piano, on music, on music theory, on techniques, on approaches, on different styles. Um, and then even when you pick one of those and you go into a song, there is lots of different approaches as to how you can learn it. And maybe you, you're playing and it works really well one day. And then you come back a few days later and it likes, it's like you're taking a few steps backwards and things don't seem to work. And your fingers are like, they're somebody else's fingers. <laughs> they're not doing what they were doing before for you. So um, I'll just run through a, a few of the common scenarios here and the solutions for those scenarios. So the first thing to consider is, do you have a structured plan? So what I mean by that is, there is so much information out there on YouTube and YouTube is absolutely brilliant for having a lot of information. So if you want to just find an answer to something, it's great to just type it in YouTube, watch some videos. It's brilliant for a bit like a Google search, just going and finding a particular piece of information. Um, what it's not so good at, <laughs> because there's so much information, which is good if you're trying to find a niche thing, the same thing, it becomes a problem if you are trying to make rapid progress in a very defined direction because there's so much in there all from different authors um all with different approaches and attitudes that if you try one thing from one person and one thing from another and one from another you can actually end up going around in circles and um you can get a lot of information that doesn't piece together in a logical way and then you can end up really confused and you can spend a lot of time not making much progress. So by a structured plan, what I mean is finding one approach, either one tutor or one approach, or um, ideally a set, like a set plan that takes you from where you are now to your end goal. So um, a structured course, online courses are great or an actual teacher. If you go to a private teacher, obviously they can, they can sit with you and work out a plan of action and then only give you the amount of information that you need to actually go from where you are to where you want to be in an efficient way. So I think that's probably part of the, of the job that we do uh, is, you know, I've got say over 40 odd years of experience Whereas if I have somebody sat in front of me or I get um, a person that, on a video tuition, private mentoring type of scenario and they have a problem, I'm scanning my 40 years of experience and picking only the relevant bits that I think are going to help them most. <laughs> uh, if I start talking about all the stuff I've learned, then that's not going to be very useful for them. So um, finding a structured course that does exactly what you need is what I would recommend. Now, when you are trying to then think, well, what do you need? Most people think they know what they need. I just want to play piano. <laughs> but that to me is a very, very wide scope with, again, very, very different approaches that can be opposites. So what can a brilliant approach for that objective over there could be really, really inefficient and really not good at all for this objective over here. So uh, I did a, a video and a PDF download on this because it's such an important topic. So that's called which piano method is best for you. So everybody on the emailing list um, gets that. So 
if you're not already on the list, uh, I recommend that you join it so you can get on it from deckplaypiano.com. Now, on the, I'll give you a quick overview now of what's contained in there. Um, there's three main types of playing from my experience. So um, rather than the one size fits all type of um, just learn notation, for example, which is what I was told when I was, when I was a child and I started learning, I just wanted to play pop music that I was seeing on TV. And uh, I was sent to a, a piano teacher and the only tool they had in their toolbox was notation and learning Mozart and Beethoven and Chopin. And um, so I had to do all that to read music. And then years and years and years later, I could buy sheet music and try and play pop songs. But you find the sheet music actually isn't what the pop stars are playing in the band. <laughs> it's, a, it's an arranged version, which is intended for a medium level of playing. And it's, it's just not what people in bands play. Um, so notation is not the most effective tool if you want to play pop music. Okay. So what is, well, chords are really, really brilliant. That's how most professional musicians I know in the pop world play. Uh, and that's certainly how I play when I'm doing sort of, uh, gigs of, uh, any kind of folk pop. Uh, any studio work, that type of thing. So if you want to sing and play, so that's, that's like one of the first types of playing is singing to play. And that's great because you don't need to play the melody, which is the part that you are singing. So you don't need to do that. You just play some chords accompaniment. So that's much easier than if you're playing the melody. So that's what I call, I call it sing play. Um, and there's also a chord play version of that. Um, so that's the first option. So go for chords if you just want to sing and play. And then uh, there's lots of styles of how you play those chords. And that's the bit that you learn. There's then playing solo piano is the second main style, which I would recommend a different approach if you want to play solo piano. So that's where you do need to play the melody, because if you're not going to sing or you're not playing with other people who are playing instruments, um, then you will need to play the melody. So a different approach there and mixing chords and melody is a very efficient way of doing that. I call that fast play is the quick way to get going. And then pro play is the professional style, which is, uh, sounds better, but it takes quite a bit longer. So those are the two ones there. Now the third one is, uh, I call it dot play, which is like playing the dots, which is playing notation. Uh, which is ideal for classical music and some modern music like Ionaudi, that type of way where you have to play an exact arrangement where all the notes you're playing in both hands needs to be exactly the same as the original, which is the opposite approach for chords, which is brilliant for playing in a band or improvising, um, playing by ear. All that side of things is the opposite of being told exactly what to play. So, those are the three main areas. Uh, chords, if you want to sing, chords and melody, if you want to play solo piano, and notation, if you want to play exact notes, classical style. When you are doing the notation bit, there is two sides to that. One is the, is the numbers way, it's a very quick way. And the second is just learning the full traditional notation, um, which, takes a bit of time because that's, that's the that's the traditional classical route. Um, so first of all, find which of those methods you really want to learn. So don't learn how to play melody. You just want to play and sing. Um, the next thing then, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you've got all those other things right and you're still feeling, feeling overwhelmed, have you... Are you taking achievable incremental steps? So have you taken on too much? Are you, are you now beyond your capability at this point and you uh, need to take a step back and just do smaller increments of learning? Um, have you got a narrow enough focus? So some, some people that I've taught 
They just want to play every song that they can get their hands on. They don't want to finish any. They just, want, they just want to play them all. So they'll have 15, 20 songs on the go at all various stages. Uh, it's, it's a bit like making 15 meals. You haven't actually finished any. <laughs> There's just all these pans on the stove all at different stages. So I always say try and keep a very narrow focus. I mean, it's great to have one song you're learning and just learn that. Now, if you are getting a bit bored or, you, or your personality type needs more variety, then yeah, that's fine. Have two, have three, but try and keep it focused because you will learn quicker if you are focused. Um, then when you have the focus, even if you say you've only got one song, there's then focus within a song. So again, a common mistake that I see quite a lot of people doing is where they just start at the start of the song and they get both hands and they trudge their way through it right to the end and go, Phew. right, start again, Phew, like that, and just hope that over time it gets better, which it will, but that's not an efficient way of learning. Uh, much, much better to break it down into tiny chunks. So that's both taking the hands separately. So maybe start with the right hand um, and then just take maybe even half a line or the first line of the music. Just do that over and over, and over again. Um, your brain will absorb the information much quicker if you make it into small chunks. And once that's smooth, then move on to the second bit and then join those two bits and move on to the third bit, etc. before you do the other hand. And then same process and then join the hands. Um, so I know that's, that seems like, oh, that's, that's a long way around. I just want to play the whole song through. But you will get to the point of playing it through better and faster if you break it down into chunks. So this feeling overwhelmed can be that you're just trudging through and then it, your progress isn't happening and it just then you feel overwhelmed. So a final tip I'll just give you on this subject is, are you having fun? because you will learn a lot more, a lot faster if you are having fun. So your brain will be more alert uh, and it will be absorbing information a bit like a child will absorb uh, information through a game faster than it will if it's very dry teaching and serious stuff, then your brain sort of is not going to absorb as much. So, I mean, music should be fun. So if you're not having fun, address that issue. Why aren't you having fun? Are you playing the music that you want to play? If not, well, change it. I don't believe in a hierarchy of music. I don't believe any music is better than any other music. Um, I don't believe in music snobbery. I think music is music. If you like it and you want to play it, that's all that matters. So, um, yeah, if there's something other reason why you're not having fun, are you practicing too long? Are you doing trying to do two hours crammed in or just you know make it smaller amounts make it at a time in the day when you are feeling alert and full of energy don't do it after a really hard day's work when you're absolutely wrecked um yeah so just arrange whatever you have to do to to have fun so uh there you go lots of information there and uh hopefully you won't be frustrated <laughs>